Hi myself, Gayatri Tanuku. I am pursuing PhD under Professor Prajasin Pillai. I am currently working on emulation of induction machines. Today I am going to introduce the Power Electronics and the Energy Research Group of Concordia. Uh, so let me introduce the lab. So let's go to the first setup. This is uh, a 150 HP induction machine dyno setup which is currently under development for testing uh, different electrical vehicles. So it basically runs at 6700 RPM. Uh, so this is uh, basically a fully developed 200 HP induction machine dyno which is developed under the supervision of Professor Rajasen Pillai by Dr. Matthews. So this is certified by Hydrocubic and this dyno is going to test different industrial machines of the Hydrocubic as well as different industrial machines from various industries. Uh, here I would like to show some of the work of my colleagues. Here uh, these are the prototypes of uh, permanent magnet synchronous machine, induction machine and the synchronous reluctance machine. Though, so they basically design the structures of the rotor and stator, skewing and slotting everything with the help of uh, motor solve, uh, ANSYS motor CAD and uh, JMAC. So they use different softwares to design all these prototypes. Uh, so this is also one of the couple of emulation circuits that has been developed in, in the lab. So this is developed by one of my colleagues. So it is uh, basically using uh, converters, switching power amplifiers for emulating uh, machines. And it basically works on the control of motor. So this is my emulator setup that, I've, that I have developed with the help of linear amplifiers. So I will uh, explain you my setup from the starting point. So the starting point of my setup is the grid. So the grid power supply is taken from motor transformer and it is going to an isolation transformer which essentially avoids the circulating currents and this isolation transformer is given to the uh, sensors after that isolation transformer we connect it to the current and voltage sensors and then it goes to the RL link filters that I have placed here and after this RL link filters then it goes to the linear amplifier to the contactor. So, uh, in between, we, uh, we have uh, kept a uh, protection card, we developed a protection card to protect the linear amplifiers. So these linear amplifiers are, are essentially of uh, 1 megahertz bandwidth. So, uh, so what I am doing with this setup is, uh, so this uh, uh, basically this setup is a power hardware in loop configuration which uh, basically runs in real time with the help of OpelRT. So this OpelRT is going to give control signals to the linear amplifier to behave uh, exactly like a real induction machine. So here uh, what I am doing in, in this setup is I am basically emulating uh, some uh, uh, grid transients uh, like uh, short circuit faults and the open circuit faults in the grid and I am emulating the transients how the motor behave to such transients. Uh, how I am uh, controlling the uh, linear amplifier emulator is with the help of OpelRT. So I am uh, using a MATLAB simulating software tool and um, I have developed the motor ma machine model. I am working on induction machine. So I have developed an induction machine model. So this induction machine model is going to uh, uh, give uh, the current output. It, it will take a voltage input and it gives the current output and that current output is being controlled with the help of emulator control. Um, so that emulator control is going, going to give this emulator control is going to give some reference currents through the analog output port of the Opel RT and with the help of our DB37 breakouts we are accessing those control signals from the uh, outlet of uh, uh, Opel RT and we are giving it to the linear amplifiers so via protection board. So, so this is what happening so this is my machine model this is my emulator control uh, and this is uh, some control signals for the protection card. So this is the real induction machine what I am emulating. Uh, this is basically a 5 horsepower induction machine which is coupled to a dyno, a DC machine. So for this coupling we mounted a torque transducer and uh, we also mounted a speed encoder at the end of the induction machine to record the speed and torque waveforms. So what we are doing is after emulating we are going to uh, validate the results of the emulator with the help of a real induction machine. So we found that results are matching that. So this is also one of my colleagues setup. So they are basically working on uh, emulating of a switching converter faults. So, so it's the same configuration. They are also uh, using PHIL configuration. 
with the help of uh, we, we also have a great uh, and uh, instead of switching amp uh, instead of linear amplifier in my setup they are using switching amplifier which are which is basically a four quadrant converter so in between we they have a uh, linear filters they are emulating uh, converter faults Uh, and they are emulating basically what are the effects of the dead time in the converter control uh, and then uh, so this uh, emulator is being controlled by the opel rt in real time okay hi my name is reef i work as a technical sales specialist at opel rt and today we have two experimental setups to show you the first one is a power hardware in the loop setup where we're going to be simulating an electric motor on an opel rt simulator and we're going to be emulating the voltages and currents uh, with real power amplifiers. And on the other hand, here we have that very real motor that we're simulating over here. We're connecting it to a dyno where we're going to provide a load to it. We're going to be measuring the voltages and the currents using HBM's ePower analyzer, which is going to provide us with a unified uh, data acquisition framework for both setups. So we found an increasing need from the market to better simulate electrical motors at Opel RT we provide you with the hardware and the software platform to do this on the hardware side you can either go the CPU route where you're going to develop a, a mechanical model of your motor and we can output those signals or if you need better precision on your motor simulation we have an FPGA toolbox called the FPGA sim which comes with pre-compiled motor models on the FPGA so that you don't have to write a single line of VHDL code and it provides you with a very high fidelity simulation of induction machines, PMSM motors or SRMs. It's important for customers to have an accurate simulation of their electrical motor because it'll speed up their time to market. This is because when you're developing your motor controller using a reliable electric motor model, you're going to have less surprises when you come to the hardware testing and validation stages. This is very important especially because hardware testing can be expensive. Uh, it's costly in terms of time and resources, and it can be limited. So, power hardware in the loop is an extension of the simulated world. But in this whole setup, you get to put your device under test under real powerful strain. Uh, this can also be important for the same reasons as we said before. It allows you to better develop your device under test and have more confidence with it when you're heading towards the hardware validation stage. You're able to see the nuances that are caused by real electrical power flow. And you're able to have your device under test under real electrical strain. So at the heart of the power hardware in the loop setup, we have Opal's OP4510 real-time simulator. We have this right here. It's a really good machine for these applications for multiple purposes. Firstly, it's a multi-core machine. You have up to four CPU cores where you can run your simulation model on. This allows you to split your simulated model onto multiple cores and decrease the time step required in the simulation. There's also an FPGA included within this model. So this allows you to run very fast data acquisition, but also more importantly, the machine models that we supply for motor emulation. So a cool feature of the OP4510 are the fiber optic ports that it has. It has up to four. This allows you to interface with power amplifiers that have fiber optic communication link which allows you to achieve low latency closed loop time steps for power hardware in the loop simulation. In this specific case, what we have is the IOs at the back of the OP4510 going to the power amplifiers over here. The set points from the mechanical machine model on the CPU will be outputted on analog outputs and sent directly to the power amplifiers. And that's what we'll be measuring at the bottom in the experiment. The output comes right to these isolated transformers here. Oh, yeah. I'm Mitch Marks with HBK. Uh, this is Opal RT conference, so many of you might not know who HBK is. Um, we're a global leader in test and measurement solutions. So we make sensors, uh, data acquisition systems, and then we have some software solutions really based around the highly accurate um, high data acquisition rates for physical measurements. Um, so we make torque sensors, uh, power analyzers, data recorders, really focused at the electric vehicle market. So in this power hardware in the loop setup and in this physical test, um, people need to take measurements. And what I have here is HBM's eDrive power analyzer. Uh, the eDrive power analyzer makes a very accurate power measurement with 
full voltages and full currents of, of a physical system. And where this will be used in the power hardware in the loop is for making very accurate measurements of the physical power. So if you have high voltages going to your power amplifiers, you can bring those directly into this system. Now, if you're an engineer and you have a power hardware in the loop setup, you might say, why do I need very accurate power measurement? Well, if you're making small changes in your model and you wanna see how those are reflected in your device under test, this power analyzer has the ability to make those very accurate measurements. So if you make small changes in your model, you can understand those small changes. Another benefit of using a real high accuracy power analyzer in a power hardware in the loop system is that when you do the setup for the power analyzer on the power hardware in the loop, you can use the exact same setup in this instance, inverter, motor, and then total power output on your physical dynamometer system. So you can have the same setup where in an inexpensive lab bench top test with power hardware in the loop, you can connect your physical sensors, make those measurements, and then when you move to the dynamometer, which is much more expensive in time, you have that physical setup ready to go. Another reason that you might use a physical uh, high accuracy power analyzer in a power hardware in the loop setup is that many parts and many tests on a dynamometer might be difficult to test high power points, quick transients, and you can do those in a power hardware in the loop simulation with your given component. So again, you can take those high accuracy power measurements, you can record all that transient data for these difficult to operate points. Then when you move to the physical dynamometer, you can take that same measurement or execute measurements that might be hard to run in the power hardware in the loop. This will give you consistent data and a consistent experience to accelerate your development and raise the fidelity of your results. In the power hardware in the loop test, where the motor model is being run on the Opal RT and real power amplifiers are simulating the motor, the eDrive system was being used to collect the physical data. So in the test profile we ran, we did a line start of an induction machine where we speed up from zero to our maximum speed of 1780 RPM. We then applied a load step which was a small incremental torque load that we can see here. So we hit our steady state torque. We had an incremental torque step where our speed dripped on the induction machine. We were making these physical measurements with the e-drive system. We then took the load step off, our speed recovered, and let the machine spin down to zero speed. We recorded this. With the electrical powers, where we were recording RMS voltages, RMS currents, average powers, uh, apparent powers, reactive powers, and such. Now the benefit of the e-drive system is that you can also record instantaneous signals like a scope. So for the entire test, we were recording high speed voltages and currents, which I can zoom in on here. This allows us to look at any anomalies in the data or understand how our control is acting, reacting to stimuluses. So we run this test where we change torques and speeds. And next we will move to the dynamometer where we look at that data as well. Now in the physical dynamometer test, where we have the induction machine, which is the device under test and the load machine, we're going to run this induction machine through the exact same test that we ran in the power hardware in the loop same voltage conditions, and we want to compare the data from the physical test to the power hardware in the loop test so we can identify anything that's different. These differences could be in the model, they could be in instrumentation, or they could be in challenges we're facing with reality. So again, in the physical test, we line started the induction machine, we watched the inrush current, we saw the speed settle, we then applied a load step, so we loaded the machine, the speed dipped, we unloaded the machine, the speed recovered, and then we spun down the test to zero speed. During the physical test with the dynamometer, we used the exact same setup in the eDrive power analyzer, the same amplifier settings, the same current sensors, the same voltage measurements. Because we were replicating the exact test in the physical power hardware in the loop, as well as the dynamometer. The only thing we needed to change in the setup was the torque and speed sensors. Because in the power hardware in the loop system, 
we were using emulated torques and speeds coming out of the OP4510. So when we switched to physical sensors, we needed to change the sensor type. But because everything else was the same, we very quickly were able to change the connections from the device under test to what we saw in the physical motor system. Now, when we ran that exact same test setup, we see extremely similar results. When we started the motor, we see that increase in speed. And now we do see some variability in things like torque. This is because the real system does have differences between the model. No matter how high a fidelity of model we have, we do always need to validate. Fortunately, I get to keep my job. But this is a very high fidelity model and a very good simulation. Because when we look at the real physical test, we can see that when we start that machine, we have that ramp up and we see extremely similar results within a couple percentage of difference. When we load that machine, we see a change. When we upload the machine, we see a very similar change. Really validating why power in the hardware in the loop can be used to accelerate our motor development. And by using things like a high accuracy power analyzer, you can trust the small changes that you'll make in your model and then validate them when you go to real hardware. And again, just so the proof is in the pudding, we have the mechanical signals of speed, torque, and power. We can go to those electrical signals and look at the RMS voltages, currents, powers, apparent powers, reactive powers, and see extremely similar trends between the simulated and the real devices. Lastly, if we go to our raw data, we can zoom in and see the finest of details because we were recording all of that. Now, once you have a data set from both your power hardware in the loop, as well as your dynamometer, you can compare those. You can identify where infidelities in your model are. You can identify hard to test points and you can accelerate your development without taking expensive dynamometer test time. It's a really powerful solution to get very accurate measurements, very precise knowledge of how your system operates so you can validate your components in the lab and then optimize them on the dynamometer. So to conclude today's presentation, we understand the reluctance of moving away from real hardware validation uh, for the verification of your device under tests and your motor controllers. Hopefully we were able to convince you that using a power hardware in the loop setup can help you speed up your time to market and reduce your testing costs as you're going to have a reliable model to work with while you're developing your controllers. It'll also help you increase the lifespan of your motors and your dynos as you'll be using them less and using them only when it matters. Furthermore, having a high precision acquisition tool like HBM's ePower Analyzer to help you bridge the gaps between your simulated world and the hardware world was, is proven to be very useful as you can go back and forth on a unified platform that you can customize and set up as you wish. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. I'd like to send a special thank you to Concordia's Power Electronics and Energy Research Group and Professor Pile who allowed us into his lab today and to Gayatri who allowed us to use her experiment to showcase our power hardware in the loop setup. I'd also like to send a special thank you to HPK who provided us with an eDrive power analyzer tool to use today and Opal RT who's made this possible on the simulated world with their OP4510.